Garfield welcomes you back to the channel. It's like 7 o'clock p.m. and I want to have this thing turboed in an hour. I don't know. Okay, so this is the STI Civic. If you're new to the channel, um, yeah, so we're going to be doing the world's first tur unequal turbo Honda. It would be the world's first unequal turbo non Subaru, but uh, Jazz Manifolds makes uh, unequal manifold for the SR. So we got a bunch of like custom fabbed stuff. Um, got to take this off. Um, we modified my 1320 UEL header so we can fit a turbo and have an external wastegate. Um, here's like a new mid pipe slash down pipe. There's down pipe. Here's the turbo. It is a STI turbo, a TDO520 G that we welded the external or we welded the wastegate flapper so that we could run the external wastegate and then we're just gonna be running this filter on it like that. Everything's AN um, everything's V band. It's gonna be really nice. And I'm ready to make Subaru sounds and it's kind of funny because Automotion is this weekend and exactly one year ago we I didn't even know that they made like a turbo manifold for Hondas. Even though it's not really common but it's becoming more common as of the last couple months. I've had my manifold for probably like eight months and at Automotion last year uh, we were looking at see if it was even a thing and then we were talking about how like how cool it would be to turbo it and stuff and it's gonna be turboed for Automotion hopefully. I did a lot of the stupid stuff off camera like we already have a bung welded on the oil pan majority of the lines are already made it's just about like putting it all together and like I said I would like to have this done in an hour intercooler already on um, we were originally going to run it up here and out the hood right here but we decided not to do that but before we decided we weren't going to do that uh, I bought my intercooler so it's got like one of these Evo 10 stock dual inlet outlet whatever things and then it does like a turn and then comes up here got the HKS super sequential blow-off valve and then this should come up and go into the turbo, but uh, with some test fitting we did, we're not sure how that's going to go. Uh, but yeah, um, I also have a Skunk 2 muffler, but I don't think we'll be able to get that on before Automotion. We're not really going to get many sound clips with it how it is without an axle back, I don't think. I don't know. Uh, I guess we'll start the time lapse. So it looks like we're not going to be able to get this done tonight. Um, we'll just pick it up in the morning. I forgot to do this and uh, basically it's just like an adapter that you can put a fitting on and then you can pull coolant from a coolant hose. And I was able to get this side in but not this one. This one took forever and now it is about to be dark out. So I'm probably just going to try doing this tonight and then in the morning it'll be good and then uh, we'll be able to get it running, hopefully. I mean, we I don't see why we wouldn't, because that's the only thing that I haven't test fit, but I'm sorry if it's a little windy. I'll try to make this quick. I was able to, last night, get these T's in for the coolant lines, and um, I also never really said what the plan was with this. So first, we are running it on a FMU. Um, so I guess what's gonna happen is we're gonna run it on the FMU on like five and a half PSI, and then I'm going to build the end. I'm gonna pull it out and I'm just gonna do like an OEM sized forged rod and uh, piston because I want to make like 300 to 320 wheel, and the stock block can't handle it. I don't really want to make more than that. Even if I was able to make more than that, I wouldn't want to because the joke with this car is kind of that. Uh, I want it to be slightly faster than like a stage two STI or basically I just want to beat Evo 10s and STIs and all the finance kids that are super in debt because uh, they bought a brand new car. Um, and then we're going to put it on a Honda ECU and we're going to get it tuned up in Oshkosh by Hunter Tuned and that's really, there's not too much left on the car. I mean there's still other stuff that I want to do but 
I just kind of want to tie up. Like, I just want to finish the Civic so then go back to the 240. I just want to finish up one project at a time. And if you're wondering, like, if you want an update on 240, basically, I've been waiting on stuff from the machine shop since January. And it is now almost June. There's not really much I can do about it, but that's just an excuse to keep working on the Civic. I know that you guys probably like the 240 stuff more, and I, I, I just want a turbo car again. I want a car that sounds good, makes cool sounds, makes people mad. And I just want to like, I want to put the gap on some finance kids. But now, all that's left really, I just have to put AN fittings. I have to figure out the length for the coolant lines and put the fittings on. But I'll probably just do that when everything's thrown on. And now we actually will start the time lapse. And I guess I will start with putting my mid pipe on. So I uh, may have finished it up off camera, but that's okay because I'm going to show you exactly what I did. So uh, I hate the lighting. So um, well, here's the oil line. I don't know if I already said this, but I used uh, an oil sandwich adapter, and then same as my 240, I have a dash four for oil, dash ten for the oil drain, and then dash six for the coolant. And you know, we got the fittings in there. We got the small filter, which just barely fits. This is how my intercooler is running. And then it goes up. Um, so I'm gonna be running manual brakes on my 240. But before I was, I got this really nice Treadstone distribution block, and it's a shame that's on the Civic now, but that's okay. But yeah, because I'm running the Chase Bay's manual brakes, uh, I can't use this to pull vacuum, so I just toss it on here. Got the FMU, the 20G, the custom downpipe. I got the wastegate down there, which I'm really proud of how that worked. Because, like, we couldn't just point it down at the ground because then flames would be coming from, like, right here. And that would kind of give away that it's not a Subaru. So, one second. And I'm pretty proud of this. You might not be able to see it. Um, the wastegate comes right here, and then there's a 90 that points down. If you can see it, it's adjusting. Got the wastegate right here, and then right there, it points down. Maybe I'll show you it later, but uh, all that I have left, I already put oil back in it. All I have left is I have to put AN fittings on the ends of these coolant lines. Hook it up, put the coolant back in it, and then we're ready to start. And you know, I guess I'm really excited for this because this has been literally a year in the making and Automotion is in less than 24 hours. And you know, you it's a Subaru, so you, you gotta have the HKS Super Sequential. It's essential and then just hearing that, the distinct sound of an external wastegate, like, I can't wait to troll people like there's just the unmistakable sound of a Subaru with an external wastegate. I really hope that it's spooly sounding because you know some STIs and WXs they don't really make a lot of spooly sounds but because it's basically straight piped right now with a resonator uh, it should be spooly. I hope it makes a lot of like intake noises too but yeah um, I'm just going to toss these cool lines together and then uh, it'll just be a startup video. Right.
I'm really sorry that this video has been all over the place. I just really wanted to make sure that the Civic was sorted before I went and got like driving clips and stuff because I mean we did get get it driving a while ago. Um, so that night we went out driving it and we were having a problem with the wastegate not opening and what ended up being the problem was what tile says the wastegate springs are isn't what they actually are like it was 5 psi too high so we were hitting like 8 psi before i let off which is really bad on an fmu because your fuel pressure could be at like over 300 psi um so then it, the next morning i swapped out the spring for the smallest one and then drove it right into town to meet up with everyone and then we drove two hours away to the Wisconsin Dells for automotion and car drove perfectly the whole time. The only problem I guess was my oil feed was a little bit loose on my sandwich adapter plate but that wasn't a big deal. We just had two PSI and yeah, you know, like I said, drove fine. And then we, I put the manual boost controller in and we drove it around for like a month and a half on f like four PSI. It was okay. FMU is pretty sloppy, but I mean, it's, it should really be used for what I used it for, which is just to get the car driving while you save up for all the other stuff you need to get tuned. Um, we have. Uh, P28. We have a P28 Honda, P28 with an S300 Honda. I got these gauges from Robert's old GTI. We've got the BR all mounted up, the Garage Moon Power floor mats, and then we got the STI Blue stuff. This looks terrible. Um, yeah, so it has 750cc injectors now. Um, a Wellbro 255 fuel pump, everything's E85 safe, and I don't know, it, it's kind of hard to remember. I gapped a 2.0 Genesis, which I'll put right here. Here's the footage from the day that we got it dyno tuned. I wasn't really expecting for it to get tuned that day. Hunter was supposed to come over and help me get it running because I didn't like clip something out of my ECU, not the J12, but it was something else. So it was still reading as a P28 and not as an S300. So he came over to fix that and then we took it out to a shop and then here's the footage. So I wasn't expecting to get my car tuned today, but it's happening. So yeah, Hunter is tuning it. He lives about 15 minutes away from me. He tunes like all the Hondas in the area. Uh, he has a nine second turbo LS box body. I don't know if you can hear me because of the wind. Um, yeah, it's pretty exciting. Don't really know what to expect. We might not get it all done today, but I'll try to document as much as I can. So right now what we're doing is we're trying to get it to just idle right with the new injectors because we think that one of the injectors might be stuck or just that the injectors are bad. So that's what we're doing right now and you know it, it's looking like it's going to run pretty good. So just filled up with 93. We had 87 in here because that's what I was using before because the car ran like crap anyway. Um, it's running better. We got it to idle good and yeah, we just filled up and now we'll hopefully go back, get some pulls, we'll start making some power. Um, 
We were having problems with the injectors, but we figured it out. So we ended up getting it all to work, and uh, we went to go put it on the dyno, but something was wrong with the dyno, and we ended up just doing a street tune, and we street tuned on 10 PSI. Ripped it around that night, and then the next day, I realized I was filling up my coolant overflow, and I was getting like high coolant temps and stuff. Turns out I lifted my head, so I basically stretched the head studs, which that could have been going on for a while, but I don't know. It would probably just happen that one day. It was, it was okay. Uh, Hunter told me to get a Y8 manifold because that would really help because this Y7 manifold is just junk. It's terrible. Like It doesn't flow good at all. So I do have the Y8 manifold on the car right now. Get to that in a minute. I also forgot to mention, changed a lot of stuff on it. I have my tile wastegate that I had for the 240. I swapped out the eBay 20G and I got an OEM TDO 516G STI turbo. That spools up a decent amount more. It makes way more intake noises. It just sounds really good. Um, just feels faster on the same PSI. It doesn't really feel like it spools up that much faster. It's still pretty laggy. Um, it doesn't really start pulling to like 5,500 RPMs, which that's not very good. So I changed up that, um, how I had my intake up against the frame rail. I made a, I made an intake, so basically it would go up more. I got a different inner core kit and stuff. We'll go over that in the next video. But I just changed a bunch of stuff, tried to improve it, tried to get more spool out of it. And yeah, so lifted the head. Head gasket was, I don't know, it might, it, it wasn't like fully blown. We weren't, it wasn't milk shaking the engine, but, um, so I got ARP head studs. Those are the ones that came on the engine. Did the ARP head studs, did a Cometic head gasket, and got the car running again. It felt really slow, so I thought that I'm, and it was shooting like five foot flames when I was no lift shifting, and... I think the timing was retarded, like one tooth. So we pulled the engine and we redid a bunch of stuff like you'll see in the next video. Redid the timing, went to go crank it, dropped a valve. Honda, I don't know what they were thinking, but basically you can have the crank flipped, not the crank, the cam flipped 180 degrees and the timing marks will all still match up and that's what happened so I dropped a valve so the engine's done doesn't matter because right here I have a built Y8 block so yeah this is already done I'm just gonna paint it I wasn't too mad at all because next weekend I was playing this is EAA uh, next weekend I was planning on getting the built this built engine anyway and then tomorrow I'm going to be picking up a head from my friend, a white VTEC head. And also, another thing that we did was I did a white trans, so a little bit shorter gears because with my RPMs and just like the gearing, like I couldn't brake. If I want to do a 40 roll, it like really does not want to like make positive pressure when you brake boost, but 45 is better. So that should be a lot better along with the better intake, not choking it out as much, and then the white head also flowing better. So I'm going to include some driving footage, some like drive-bys and stuff, because I can't leave you like that. This thing sounds really good. In video it might not sound super real, like, I don't know, like a Subaru, but in person it sounds exactly like a Debra X. It's actually hilarious. Um, yeah, so I'll put clips in from when we in the future when we put the new engine in and it's running on that old tune so after that I guess I'll be the end of the video so the next video um, it's gonna have the built engine we're gonna go to the dyno we're gonna try to make 350 close to 400 as possible on E85 and then gap some people I guess I don't know um, sucks because I really want to drive this
and I, I got it tuned and broke it the next day or that night. I'm just going to shut up and uh, hear some clips. Thank you. 